WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. are tuned to WVTCRadioDetroit.com to the Sandy Rose Show with your host Sandy Rose where you'll hear the finest in gospel music, insightful conversation, and guests that will enhance you. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Monday and Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube. So get your pencil, paper, and shouting shoes and get ready for today's broadcast. Why not text a friend or tag a friend and tell them to listen to? My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that thy hands have made, You stood somewhere behind the great, grand, and glorious hills of eternity. Rearrange your agenda for the creation of this vast universe. You reach down with your omnipotent hand unto the great abyss of nothingness and threw nothing out into nowhere and nothing became something. What a world we live in. Look at this world. It's gigantic and it's grand. Mountain heights with scintillating views. Valleys scooped out by eternal hands. Rolling prairies, running brooks. Rippling streams blessed with gold, silver, diamonds, and all kinds of precious minerals. My soul sing When I look and see how God splashed the multitude of stars Kissing the heavens like diamonds sprinkled against black velvet And hanging like trapezes from the roof of God's gymnasium You place the moon and announce for the world to hear This is the queen of the night And she has never stopped shining The oceans, whose depths have to be measured in miles. The sun has never run out of gas. The stars keep coming out to play. The seasons still march in splendid succession. My God is real. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He even looked around one day to see what he had created and said, that's good. And one day, when he brings everything to consummation and a glorious fruition, when he comes with a shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? When he calls me, I will answer 
and I will bow in humble adoration and my soul will say, how great, how great thou art. For I know I have a house of many mansions, eternal in the heavens, up where Jesus lives, up beyond the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the exosphere, the troposphere, up where I'll never grow old, up to the streets of gold, up beyond the vicissitudes of life. And I will honor him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and simply say to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and forever and forever. My God, how great thou art. That's what verse 20, that's what verse 20 tells us, that he had a miraculous conception. But while talking about Joseph, while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. That, my friends, is a non-negotiable matter that Mary's pregnancy was not by the efforts of a man. It was not by her having sex with her fiancé. It was not by her cheating on her fiancé. It was not by a medical procedure. It was not by vitro infertilization or whatever it's called. She had a divine impartation by the Holy Spirit deposited inside of her that made the difference in all our lives. Can I get an amen right here, somebody? All right, everybody, come on, let's celebrate Jesus. On the first day of Christmas, Jesus came to me. He gave you victory. On the second day of Christmas, Jesus came to me.
<laughs> right. That was none other than Keith Wonderboy Johnson. We will never, ever forget him and his contribution to gospel music and to the kingdom. Well, we want to welcome everybody, Lottie Dottie and everybody to today's installment of the Sandy Rose Show. And I am Sandy Rose and you are? I'm Pastor Jackie and glad to be back with you. Thank you for all the prayers. I am Teresa Acton, and we are glad to see Pastor Jackie and each one of you today. And I am Richard Daryl Nichols, all the way from Chino, <laughs> you know, Chino, California. Oh, oh. You, don't, you don't have on that coat you had on yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Cold Looking milk. like one of the kids on South Park, right? <laughs> I got on the heat today. <laughs> yeah. Looking good, though, Richard. Yeah, thank you for awfully good. Awfully oh, thank you. We have Blinky Williams. I got to. You got uh, to be ready. You got, got to be ready and in perfect shape for Blinky Williams. Hey, now Blinky. That's right. That's <laughs> right. We've got the one and only legend. That's a legend. I mean, and we've got some music to play today, um, and we're going to talk to her. And she's just been such a. I mean, she's wonderful. Uh, and once you hear the music, you're going to say, I didn't know all that. Right, right. <laughs> I didn't know all that. So get your friends and tell them to come on to the show today. Um, we are glad we haven't seen you, Pastor Jackie, in a, in a bit. But we are glad, so glad, so glad to have you on with us today. And you're looking at Amen. us and we're looking back at you. Amen. 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 Please, everybody else, stay in your body. Just stay in your body. <laughs> Life stay is stay right. In stay body. in your body. I can't take no more. I really can't. I can't take. Yeah. I told the Lord, okay, I really can't take no more. That that last one was a blast. And, yeah. But yeah. God is good, saints. God he is. is good. God is he good, is. and grief is real. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But and God that's why we good. we have people on our show to help us to get through things like this because they will happen if we keep living, yeah, trust me. If one is gonna hit you like it's never hit you before, oh, if you keep living, if you keep that living. That one did, that one hit us, knock everybody, my, all my friends, all the family, just knock, it knocked your socks off with your shoes on. Yeah. Okay. That's mighty powerful. All right. <laughs> how, uh, what was, how old was he? He was, you know, he, had, he just turned 40. 40. He had just turned 40 on his birthday. Wonderful uh, man of God. Awesome. Just a good guy. Not married. No children out of wedlock. Two degrees. Outstanding in his work. His, his boss, his boss is the person that found him because his boss wasn't used to him not, not responding to a work call. And right, right. Uh, he went to the house with the police, and they found that they found him. And his boss wept like he was his mama. You, I said, okay, but uh, God is good, y'all. God is yes, good. He is. Yeah. Yes, he God is. Yes, he is good. And, and now, let me say saved. this one thing. Let me tell you what God said to me, because I said, God, he was only forty. He finished his race at forty, and you know what the Lord said to me? Yep. And it dried up all my tears immediately. Didn't take the pain away, but it dried my tears. He said. My son died for all y'all at 33. Yeah. Well, I and said, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I just yeah. said, oh, I guess he did yeah. finish his race. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and as Bishop Jameson would say, um, and they asked, where, where, God, where were you when my son died? He said, the same place I was when my son died. Son died. So okay. He's <laughs> watching and, and he knows he's all watching. and he feels what we feel. And we thank God that he does feel what we feel, the same compassion. Yes, he does. He he understands the loss of a son. Yep. Or should, yeah. should I say a child? A loss yeah. of a child. He, he understands. And a friend. And, 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 last and a, with his yeah. friend understands all of that. All of that. God is good, though. He's he good. is. He's good. He's, He's good in the work good. to He's be praised. Good. And we're glad that we are still here and we are celebrating this Christmas season. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a, my different background today. <laughs> no, very this different. Is that we are at, at either one of the Detroit studios. We are um, in <laughs> Florida 
today. Oh. And we thank God for that, um, for safe travel. Yeah, we down here trying to do what we do. And um, if, if things don't work exactly like they should, I want, it, I want you to know, child, we trying here. It's a little different. <laughs> We're not at the studios. Sandy, so, are you on Southwest? We are in um, Clearwater. No, no, no. On the airline, did you fly? Oh, God, no, no. <laughs> no. No, I, no, 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 no. All right, all right. No, because I hear they having all kinds of issues. Issues. Hmm. Issues. Right. I had issues. But you know something, Sandy, Pastor Jackie and my friend Teresa, thousands of flights were canceled. That's Ooh. right. But I was on the one that wasn't. And I look at God. <laughs> I made it out all right. <laughs> I made it out. That's right. Made it out all right. <laughs> so how was Christmas, everybody? We know that we were on with the show yesterday, and yesterday's show was um pre-recorded. We recorded that um what was that Friday? Something like that. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. We recorded it Thursday and it was, uh, it, we had a good time. We had a good time. Sure thank, thank everybody for coming on yesterday and being with us. And we were able to be in the chat today. You might not see much chat from me at all. Cause I, this is not, this is not my normal thing. I can't. <laughs> you just blessed to be up at all, huh? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're yeah, we coming through though. Yeah. You're coming through. Yeah, and we are glad that everybody is is online. Um, again, share this broadcast. We're so glad to see each and every one of you because you could be doing something else, but you said, mm -mm, I'm going to be with y'all. So we thank God for that and um, all of that. So what's going on in the world, y'all? Well, you know, I did have a question. I, I, hear, I heard you play uh, uh, Wonder Boy. Yes. And the Christmas music. Now Christmas is over. So when do you stop playing Christmas music? After New Year's. Yeah, I would say I would say New Year's. After, After New Year's. Year's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start then, playing it. You start playing it uh, at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. And you play it straight that. through till after New Year's. And what yeah. do you play after New Year? Whatever you want to play. <laughs> I know, I know that's right. <laughs> Whatever's going on. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, on my Facebook page, I always put all the How I Got Over songs with oh, okay. Franklin, Patti LaBelle, um, Whitney Houston. That's good. Okay. Yeah, so How That's I good. Got Over. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And we played that that particular song. You know, I was going to play it, but we could not get all the songs, our Christmas songs in. And we did want to play that uh, Keith Wonderboy Johnson song. Um, and and as you all know, like we home to be with the Lord this year. And um, Roosevelt requested that song. And uh, we made sure that we got it on. We got it on for him. Now he said, "How long do you say Happy New Year uh, to to family and friends?" So, so the end of February for the month, mid January. Okay, first of all, we're gonna say Happy New Year. It's only one year. Right. So, Happy New Year. Say Happy New Year. <laughs> but I mean, I say it all the all month. How about you guys? Well, you know, you know me, I'm out of the pocket. I say it all year. Oh, no. I say good okay. morning. Good it's only morning, new. It's, all it, day it, it ain't long. new. In, in, when, once you get past 90 days, it ain't new no more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not been an old year. <laughs> okay. And Regina said all month long. Yeah, so yeah. Good. I think so. What, what you think, Teresa? Yeah, I do. I do. A month. A month, a month is good. January's first month. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you know, now now we haven't been doing resolutions, but uh, this is a good time to start incorporating some other behaviors, um, you know, just, just to be in the newness of the season, just to be in the newness of the season. So um, are there any behaviors that, that anybody is going to incorporate? Well, I went to the doctor this morning and uh, I'm going to start drinking 
just water. More water. Okay. Well, I told you before I'm an addict, and I usually drink one Coke a day. Then it went to three Cokes and four. So I'm yeah. trying to just have no Cokes or no soda in my diet. That's a good I idea. did it once. I can do it again. <laughs> You don't buy it. Green tea. Don't buy it. Don't have it in your house. Don't buy it. If yeah, not. yeah. That, and now that's one thing, you know, clean your house. Um, <laughs> but we are grateful. Uh, let's see. Regina Odom says that no spike. Uh, no, that was Roosevelt. No spiked eggnog for him. <laughs> and so uh, we are, you know, I, I personally, I like to just clean my entire house get everything out that I'm not going to wear, I'm not going to use, and just make it clean so a, so my environment is clean and I can have a clean mind to go in and do something fresh. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, Sandal, how long does it take you to clean your house? Uh, it could take a day. Mm. Really? I mean, you know, because I have my bag out, you know, when you go through your closet, because if I haven't worn it in, say, two years, it's, it's something is wrong. And how is the Lord going to bless you with something new if you can't get into the closet? So, okay. <laughs> our, you know, taking stuff Urging, out. urging. That's right. So, and and that's some of the things that we do at your house. You ever been to somebody's house and, and you know, they got sick or whatever, and you got to help them. It's like, it just got stuff. It's just stuff. And it's like, Sometimes you got to get rid of that stuff, you know, just I'm, a stuffer. I'm not a hoarder, but I have stuff. Have you been to counseling? Okay. About that? <laughs> yeah. and, and really the hoarders say they're not hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> they be like, no, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you can walk, you can walk through, through, you can walk through my house and not trip, <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 everything has, I has sentimental value to me. Yeah. If you give me yeah. something, I'll have you. If you gave it to me at age ten, nine times out of ten, I still have it. Yeah, and I, I, hold, I, hold, I, I hold on, especially if somebody gave it to me. I, yeah. I'll hold on to it and hold on to it and hold yeah. on to it's it. It's tough. My husband's yeah. giving me a couple of uh, shirts, uh, and I just, I can't do anything with them i mean i just i don't wear them but they're just he, gifts they're gifts See? like you said they're gifts yeah and so you keep a few and you gotta learn you gotta start getting rid of stuff purging is you know, hard somebody else could be using it now yeah. i love yeah. michael he says that he loves to clean his apartment as often as he can of course you know we all clean the house but i mean when you're talking deep deep clean you know Deep cleaning is a whole different thing when you get the baseboards and right. you know, all of that. That's the that's, windows. Yeah, yeah. Get the windows cleaning and all of that. I have and, a housekeeper for all of that. I, 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 there's, I, I could not handle doing all of that physically. I can handle. Yeah, that. so that's I have why I have that happy does. made and happy, yeah. happy yeah. made, and for a small donation. Yeah. <laughs> And I gladly give that donation. Well, yeah. Michael, Michael can come down 75 anytime he wants to. <laughs> right, right on up 75. Right on up 75. Right on up 75, and he can hit me too. Amen. And Kwame, bless his heart, says that he's praying for the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> seriously, they don't even know they hoard. They have right. no idea. They have yeah. one mm -hmm. idea. And right. so uh, Michael says, that's my apartment look like a church so i have to keep my little church clean all oh. right <laughs> and, and, and that's how I, you know and, and i like that because that's how i felt about i feel about the studio right. god has blessed us with this brand new studio and i was telling larry who is our new station manager that i would i don't want anything in here that i would not put in my house mm -hmm. so only the best if it's not good enough for my house is not good enough for God's studio. Okay? So I want the people to come in and feel excellence. So um, we are we are glad about that. And thank God, thank you, Michael Peters, for having that spirit of excellence. Because a lot of people, um, you go to some of the pastor's house and they look a mite 
better than the church. Okay. <laughs> you go to church and it smell like I don't know what. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. And there are some. Yeah, yeah. And and your church shouldn't look your house shouldn't look better than the church. I agree. I I think churches should be beautiful. I don't and care what style, what style they are. I you know, because I'm not really into that that new that new look. It looks like more like a nightclub to me. Mm -hmm. that open stage and them strolling lights and, and, and things. But if it's clean, if it's clean, that's smell what, good. and in order, that's what's smell important good. to me. And thank you, and smell good. It has to be clean and it should smell good because it is the place where it yeah. is. And, and my thing, Pastor Jackie, is that it should be open. And I would like the churches to work on that this year to have the church open. Sometimes you might just drive past the church and say, I just want to sit in there and feel God. And pray. But very, very few churches are open during the week. So let's That's kind of true. work on that. So, you know, there you you. You say Man, people, you done gave me a thought. You, yeah, you, say you people don't come to the minutes. church. Open it. Five minutes from my church, and I I could very well drive over, unlock, uh, and and be present and allow people to come in off the street and have prayer or just sit and be quiet, have music. I just want to sit. That's a nice little thought, Sandra. Thank you. I just want to sit sometimes and be quiet. You know, because yeah. it's a shame that you have all that building and it's open. What twice a week for mm -hmm. a couple hours? For, for a couple hours once a week, so you probably can't get more than four or five hours. And now a... the pandemic comes, you're not even in there as long as you used to be. Oh, right. Right. See, I, don't see, I was not trying to go there, but we have a special <laughs> guest. <laughs> I, I'm feeling you, Pastor. Um, we have a special guest. Uh, who who's got the bio? Oh, I got the bio. And okay. it is my honor, my privilege to read the bio today. I'm wearing this purple uh, tie, not because I'm of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated, Incorporated. But because we have a queen here today. Rose. We got a queen today. We so got I'm wearing my purple tie in honor of Miss Sandra Dlinky Williams. She was born May 21st, 1944. She is an American R&B and soul singer, songwriter, probably best known for singing the female lead on the theme for the 1970s TV series, Good Times. So glad we have them. Don't Good sing that because we're going to ask. We, we got a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to sing. I just got caught up for a minute. <laughs> for a minute. Williams was born in Oakland, California, but later grew up in Los Angeles. The daughter of a pastor, she was active in her church choirs since the age of six years old. Her two siblings are Diane Williams Witherspoon and Pastor Austin F. Williams. She recorded the album Heart the Voice on Atlantic Records then moved to Motown, where she recorded as Blinky five singles, including her debut, the Ashford and Simpsons pent single, I Wouldn't Change That Man He Is, The Man He Is, a song reportedly written by Loving Spoonful studio bass player James Killingsworth in 1968 and thought she would find success when she recorded a duet with Edwin Starr entitled Just We Two on the heels of his 25 miles. However, that did not get the promotions that either the Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell or the Supremes and Temptations um, did, duets did. And, a sec and again, success eluded her when after becoming a protege of Sammy Davis Jr. If you don't know who Sammy Davis Jr. Are, is, you are too young. <laughs> His deal with the label fell through. Blinky record, released two further singles for Motown in the early 1970s on the company's California-based Mo West 
a subsidiary. I'm going to get that tomorrow. And has several <laughs> others scheduled for release that were not issued. She is also credited with singing the themes for the 1970 TV series, Good Times, along with Jim Gilstrap. I hope Blinky tells the story about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to ask her. <laughs> Blinky version of God Bless the Child appears on the album Rock Gospel, The Key to the Kingdom, and her recording of Taint Nobody's Business is, if I do, is on the soundtrack of Lady Sings the Blues, the Billie Holiday biopic starring Diana Ross. Most of her solo work, uh, save for a few singles, remained unreleased until 2019 when Real Gone Music released a double CD compilation of tracks from the Motown vaults. She can be heard live on the Motown Review Live CD. In addition, she has one of the she was one of the original Kojic singers with Andre Crouch, Sandra Crouch, Billy Preston, Edna Wright, who is the lead singer of the Honeycombs, uh, Frankie Carl, and Gloria Jones. Following her non-success with Motown, she returned to gospel music and resumed with her given name. On October 31st, 2009, Sandra appeared as a backup singer along with Sharon Jones performing the Rolling Stones Exile on Main Street as part of the rock band Phyllis musical costume at the Festival 8, which was held at the Emperor Polo Grounds in Indio, California from October 30th, 2009 through November 1st, 2009. Without any other ado, you should be on your feet right now, giving this young lady a standing ovation. We're going to give her a good God bless you and a WVTC welcome. Welcome, Miss Blinky Williams. Amen. Amen. I am so excited about her being here. And I'm going to play a clip. And this clip, um, just to give you a little background on this, it's Sammy Davis Jr. is introducing her. And she's going to sing um, the song, God Bless the Child That's Got His Own, which he's famous for. But um, pay no attention to the cigarette. Um, just <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen to the voice, for real, for real, for real. Listen, listen you, you would have to know. This is something for her to do this is great. I mean, for her to be involved with Sammy Davis Jr. and all of this, it is it, this was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. So we're going to bring her on and we're going to play this clip so that you all can see her. And when we come back, we will be with the one and only Sandra Blinky Williams right here on WVTC. Now there is a, there's a lady that I've been, I brought with me tonight because I wanted you to meet her. And because uh, she's been on the road with me for about, I'd say, Hugh, about almost two years. And she's really something else, man. And I don't know if you know. Do you know Blinky? Blinky? Blinky. I don't think so. There she is over there. Yeah. Yeah. Them that's got show get Them that's not show lose For the Bible says And believe me It still rings true, yes it does Your mama may have Your papa may have But God bless the child Believe me, 
it still rings true, yes it does. Your mama may have, your papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. Just a little bit more while the weak ones may put empty pockets, they never, never make the green. No, 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 no. Your mama may have, oh, your papa may have. God bless the child, and I'm talking about the child. That's really got his own Oh my God, that was just outstanding, just outstanding. Oh my goodness, my goodness, she gave it to us. Um, you know what? We got to get the, the kids. <laughs> that was outstanding. Welcome to the show, Blinky Williams. How are you doing today? But thank you for having me, and how are all of you? Oh, well. awesome, awesome, awesome. Did that bring back any memories for you? Yeah, I brought back a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I, was, I was nice and thin and in great voice and had a powerful voice. Yeah, I did. In fact, that was a, a show that we were doing for um, Hugh Hefner. Yeah. It was the, and the Hugh Hefner show. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I, can, you know, um, thank you so much for having me and for wanting to be And it is my honor to be here. God bless each of you. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Um, and we were just, I mean, just that, just being with Sammy Davis Jr., we all know the icon that he was um, in music, and we know the power that Hugh Hefner had as well. And for you to be invited there and for, to be introduced. Now, you were on the road with uh, Sammy Davis for a while? I was on the road with Sammy for nine years. Wow. And yeah, in fact, he often would tell people that um, he was my co-star. That's how cool he was. He was very warm. Uh, he was such a warm, nice guy. Before you ask me a question, this is burning me up. I got to say this, uh, Richard. That information that you got, that bio online, some of it is so untrue. Oh wow! Okay. Wow. I get a couple for myself. Can't always read what's can always read what's online. Um, I, I, what was the group that you mentioned? Um, I never appeared with the Rolling Stone. 
but some kind of way that was plugged into my bio. I mean, I love the Rolling Stone and, and, and Mick, Mick Jagger, but I never appeared with them, but they had that in there for a long time. And um, some other things in there, I'm gonna make sure that my publicist goes in and makes those corrections. We've been, um, I've been, it's been on my mind to do it, I did, but I just kept forgetting. But I'm really glad to be here. I just wanted to say that. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So now, how did you get started singing? Um, my dad's church, you know, when your father is a pastor, you go out to sing or play an instrument. So he was pastoring, um, he was pastoring, uh, in, uh, in Stockton. And, um, uh, um, I was the last of the of three children. And so I started singing, um, I started singing, um, and playing when I was like around six years old. In fact, that's how I met Sandy, uh, in Stockton. They were filming Porgy and Bess. Oh, and, wow. Uh, uh, they wow. were filming, um, many people probably don't remember that, um, that, 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 that piece of history, but it was being filmed in Stockton and during that time, um, um, the blacks could not stay in the hotel. So Sidney mm -hmm. Poitier and those that were in the cast, my father was had the biggest black Baptist church there and he was also president of the ministers there. And so he made arrangements for the cast of Porgy and Bess to stay um, at the YMCA. Um, the mm -hmm. first two nights that they were there, they were staying on the county fairgrounds in tents and mm -hmm. in little huts. And my father went to the producer and he says, um, I want you to shut the movie down if we cannot get you into a good place. So all the, the uh, other crew people, the whites and so forth, they stayed at the Stockton Hotel. And so finally, um, he was able to get them after a couple of days rooms at the YMCA. That's a little piece of history. Wow. And, and so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 So I want to ask this question to those in the audience. Um, I know uh, Bobby Bobby Washington, our friend and photographer, um, is right. watching. And he says that he can't hear. So we want to make sure that everybody. So if you can put in the chat, if you can hear uh, Blinky all right, let us know uh, that you can hear all right. Because she's coming through clear for us. All right. Um, and so uh, let's see. Catherine Rochelle says that when I first started singing in the late 60s, Blinky Williams was one of my mentors. Thank you, Blinky, for encouraging me. And the song she introduced me to, and I still sing today, I Find No Fault in Him. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. I love Catherine. Thank you. Her dad was friends with my dad. Oh, my God. I love, I love Kathy Rochelle. That was a, and that was a song. Oh, that was written. Oh, I'm going to bring tears to my eyes. Oh, amen. 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 And that is just wonderful that you are inspiring people, um, even from back then all the way up till today. Mm -hmm. um, so now you sang with Motown. How did you get to Motown? Um, I was at I was at Mavericks flat. And um, Paul Williams and Eddie Kendricks came by Mavericks one night and they caught my show. And um, they, we later went to the pancake house, which was open all night. We went to the pancake house and we ate and they were telling me all about Motown and so forth. And I knew no Motown songs. And so the next day um, we would ate breakfast again and they, they took me up to Motown when I was on Sunset and Vine and introduced me to Hal Davis. And so um, Hal Davis, who was running the um, uh, Los Angeles the Hollywood office at that time, um, spoke with me and he did a check and wanted to uh, hear me sing. So he was in the studio that afternoon. So I sang and he wanted, he recorded about nine, nine or 10 pieces on me and sent, um, uh, and sent the footage to, um, sent for the tape to, uh, to Detroit. And um, they called me to go to Detroit and I sang there again and um i was signed um there with barry and smoky in detroit wow. wow but they they asked me they said um okay sing a motown song and i said well i really don't know any <laughs> i really don't know any motown songs they said well what about you beat me to the punch and i said 
I got confused because I know what he meant. But it was a song. And so then they asked me about um, another song. And I didn't know that. I said, well, so can I just sit down at the piano and play a song? So I sat down on the piano and played um, God Bless the Child and Our Day Will Come. So did you, are you more um, apt to sing classics? No. As opposed to Motown or what, what, what style of music? I, I was, I, I was a gospel singer. I was a Kojic. I okay. Was a and, and tell us, tell us about that. Cause some people think it's, that just means that you are a member of the church of God in Christ. Tell us about the Kojic singers. Okay. In fact, um, in fact, I'm born and raised in the Baptist church. The Kojic singers were organized by, the Kojic actually was organized by Gloria Jones uh, and Frankie Springs and Andre Crouch at a convocation. And so when they came back and um, we were all preacher's kids with the exception of Billy and um, Frankie. Mm -hmm. Did that answer it? Okay. Well, uh, it, you kind of froze up there for a second. Um, and we are having a little issue. So can you give us that response um, again? Yeah, the Christian singers, we were all preacher's kids, pastor's kids. And C-O-G-I-C-S, uh, that was because they had to sing that night and didn't have a name. So Gloria Jones said, we're just going to call us the Kojics. Koj um, I'm the Kojic singers. So um, that's, how we, that's how we got the name. Uh, Edna Wright was um, apostolic. I was Baptist. Billy was Baptist. Frankie was Church of God in Christ. And Gloria Jones, Andre, and Sandra Krauss, they were on Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's, wow. That's how, we, that's how we became a group. No jealousy. We were just so crazy about each other and just love singing. We, we all really did love the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, and you went on to continue to sing with uh, Brother Andre Crouch and, and Sandra Crouch. Um, um, so, I how long did you sing with them? I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I said, how long did you sing with them? Um, maybe about maybe about three years. What happened was um, the producers, there were so many talented kids in, in the, in the, in the coaches. We were called the Teenage Wonders of the World. And we used to open for everybody, Davis Sisters, Caravans, um, the um, Swan Silver Towns. And um, the producers in the secular world saw all this talent. So the Beatles were pulling at Billy and different producers were pulling at all. So they pulled us all apart and we ended up recording, you know, with various um, and with, with various recording companies. Mm -hmm. um, I, I sang with the disciples for a couple of, about, about a year uh, okay. later on in life, but not to say, I just did, did a couple of um, things with them, Carnegie Hall and uh, the Philippines, and that was it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. So, Blinky, uh, go ahead. Ms. Blinky, um, you've been part of the church. How did your father feel about you singing secular music? <laughs> He's the reason I started singing. He passed away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -huh. he, he passed away. He would not have liked it. But, um, in fact, um, I was in such bereavement that um, when my father passed away on one Sunday, Motown had sent my ticket um, um, in March. I didn't leave until the 4th of July, and I didn't realize it was a holiday. Wow. So I was, I was grieving very heavily because I was just, just minister of music. And um, even though my mother, my mother didn't want me to go uh, because I was the last to leave home. She didn't want me to go, but she didn't discourage me. Um, so I went to try it out. But my dad would not have liked it. No. no. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's something. That is really something. Um, right. Looking at this comment uh, from Bobby Washington, he said that Blinky was my directress at my father's church back in the day. I followed Blinky as a kid when she sung with Andre Crouch and Kojic singers, she's a good and wonderful person to know. Amen. I Amen. love, Bobby has been my friend. We went to high school together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I was listening uh, earlier to some of your music and uh, Juliet was on the phone with me and she was like, oh my God, she can really, really sing. And so 
we are really introducing you to people who have never even heard you. And mm-hmm. that's, that's something, you know. Yeah, people have never even heard you. And they were like, oh my God, her voice is just so <laughs> clean and clear. Yeah. yeah. Miss Blinking, I got yeah. a question up here. Okay. Um, we were talking about uh, how you made it to Motown. Uh, did anyone ever offer you uh, an opportunity to uh, record uh, with go- just gospel music or was it just um, secular? Uh, it was just secular because at the time Motown didn't have a gospel label. Right. And they weren't doing gospel music at all. And it just so happened that one, at one point um, Frank Wilson uh, decided to produce um, Keys to the Kingdom which featured uh, me, Marvin Gaye, Glass Night, and Pips, and different ones who doing gospel music. Um, I did do gospel for Atlantic. I have an album. I recorded an album called um, Hark the Voice okay. uh, on Atlantic, and that on Atlantic, and that was it. That was um, the, um, it was a song that they pulled out called Heartaches, and that's what took me to the Apollo. Um, okay. I was about 19. Wow. Blinky, how did you get your name, Blinky? Yeah. Just look at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I trust me, I try to put my hair in my face and you'll see a lot of PR pictures of me with shades on because I felt very subconscious because I always blinked and I hated that. <laughs> you feel like the blink too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the Johnny Carson show once with Sammy Davis. It was me, Sammy Davis, and uh, Aretha. And so um, Johnny Carson asked Sammy, he says, well, so why they call her Blinky? So Sammy says, because she sneezes. Why do you say she <laughs> they, they pan the camera right in my face. And uh, Johnny said, oh, my God, holy blankety, blankety, blank. You know, and I was, because I was blinking. Because <laughs> <laughs> she sneezes. <laughs> right, right. So this is humor. This is humor. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I have a, I want to play a song. Um, I was going to go another way, but we'll play that one last. Um, But this one is a song that you recorded and they just released your anthology in what, 2019? Uh, Yes. uh, Your songs that you did with Motown. And I I bet it's what, 30, 30, 40 songs on there? And I think it's like about 30, I think about 32 songs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and Motown, they have a can of, of, of a trillion songs, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and for you to be able to go into the studio and to record all of that, and we thank God that it's released now. And we do have one that we're going to later on in the show, we're going to give one to a lucky viewer um, that is viewing. We will make sure that you get a copy of it. But right now we're going to play a song from that anthology and it's People Make the World Go Round. Tell us about that song. Introduce that for us. Um, I would, but I just don't remember it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, listen, it is the bomb, oh, people. I want right. you to listen to her. I would, but I don't remember. Yeah, I'd just like to hear listen that. to her voice. So um, we're going to go. Since she doesn't remember, we're going to say
losing on every share They're blaming it on longer Smoking in their easy chair On a fat cigar without a care But that's what makes the world go round The ups and downs, the carousel Changing people's affairs around Loving that. I remember that. I remember that song. <laughs> but now, <laughs> what that, the, go ahead. I think the stylistics or somebody recorded yeah, that. Yeah. Somebody. Yes, yes. Yeah. They made the song. But that was a wonderful cover of that song. Wonderful yeah. cover. That was wonderful. I mean, I would have preferred to listen to that because for years I listened to the stylistics and couldn't yeah. figure out what they were saying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and everybody, yeah. So many comments online that people are just wow. loving, loving this song. And I'm glad that they released it. You know, now is your time, Blinky. Now is your yep. time. Yep. I'm, I'm Pay us your golden. <laughs> your ladder is your greater. Pay yep. us. And the interesting thing and I, is. And I also direct in churches. I direct. I direct a choir in church. I have a choir, choir called the Hollywood Choir. I still, I mean, I feel blessed. The Lord gave me the talent, and so yes, I sing in the club, I sing in the arena, and I sing at church. Mm -hmm. But see, you don't sing, you don't sing raunchy music. You don't sing no. raunchy stuff. You sing songs that have stories, real stories yes. to tell of life's situation. People do make the world go round. It ain't, it ain't going yeah. around by accident, right? <laughs> you know. That's, yeah. a, that's a story to tell. And we need to hear people sing songs that have a good spirit. Yes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, we don't sing Jesus Keeps Me Near the Cross every day. And you get married, you don't want to hear Jesus Keeps Me right. Near the Cross. You want to hear something else. And um, we need Everything people has its place. Sing spirits. Amen. Everything has its place. I did there. a show the at the, um, at the Catalina Jazz Club up in Hollywood. And I always do a segment, even when I was on the road with Sammy Davis, I did, um, I would always do uh, 11 minute gospel um, segment. And the other night I did, um, thank you Lord for saving me. <laughs> and after that, I did God bless the child and I did Santa baby, but um, yeah. nothing takes me away from my roots. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good to hear. And um, I think uh, uh, the pastor of, of New Bethel, the pastor now, Reverend Robert Smith, they asked him 
um, when Aretha Franklin passed away and they were just blasting the music in the streets. And they said, you're going to play Aretha's music in the church. And he said, yes, yeah. she didn't sing anything that we couldn't play in church. <laughs> you know, it's about love. And just like you said, Pastor Jackie, about love and life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all it is. That's all, that's right. all it is. Blinky, I was going to ask you a question about your unsuccess your unsuccessful experience with Motown and what did that teach you? And then also, uh, how did it feel when Barry Gordy attended your concert uh, a couple of months ago at Catalina Bar? Okay, um, I'll answer two parts. Um, um, I don't consider, I, I, mean, I was very glad that Barry came. Barry came to my last two shows. And you know, as you know, I called him on stage. Um, I would say that my career at Motown was unsuccessful. I was always working. I worked with Marvin. I worked with the Temps. I stayed with the Temps for four years. Um, I, and I worked with just about every, everybody there. It was not an unsuccessful um, career. It, the timing was, um, the timing of them signing me was was the timing was bad when i got to motown david just left the Thames. Mm. Uh, back uh, uh, dennis and i we made our debut at the same time uh here at the los angeles forum his first night was with the Thames, and that was my first night uh as a motown artist we both opened up at the forum uh, but as i said when i first got to motown uh, diana was getting diana was getting ready to leave diana just left the streams Martha Reeves was going solo. Um, David Ruffin had left the tips. And um, the, uh, uh, the Jacksons, um, they needed a hit. Gladys needed a hit. Everybody needed a hit when I got there. So that's why you have that compilation of so many songs for the anthology, because I was put in the studio with every with every producer and writer at Motown. So when Ashford and Simpson, um, wrote um, um after they got to you know i need to get by they did the, the the song on me and edwin we were hoping for it to be a, a success but everybody was leaving so the concentration in the studio was not on blinky williams or edward Starr. it was on getting a hit for uh the jackson five getting hit for diana in fact um the song someday we'll be together that's not the supreme that's the kojic singing on there that's me Rita Wright, edwin Wright, gloria jones Oh wow! Someday, it will someday we'll be together. I can say that now because it's true. And wow. um, so wow. they were going in different directions, and um, so I was um, pushed to be on the road with the, which was an honor. I was on the road with the Tips, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 one nighters, you know, um, and then eventually uh, my uh, manager, who was Shelley Berger, who was also the manager for the Tips, manager for the Supreme, then became Diana's manager. And he's still manager right now for Otis Wing and the Tips. Um, Sammy, we were in the studio and he heard my voice accidentally coming through his earphones one day at, at Capitol. And so um, he got in touch with um, uh, Cy Marsh. Cy Marsh and Shelly Burke hooked me up and they wanted me to go on the road with Sammy. So um, Sammy, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sammy wanted me to um, uh, be his opening act. And that's how all that came about. Um, then later on, um, um, I did speak with um, Mr. Gordy, and he said that we just, it was so much going on. Plus, at the time, they were they were making a move to, to Hollywood. So I got caught in the middle. But it wasn't an unsuccessful career at Motown. Motown, um, I just didn't, didn't, didn't get a bunch of hits. But Motown was a 24-hour university. You were either learning choreography, you were learning how to move, you were learning how to talk, you were learning how to do interviews or you were recording. So it, um, I just didn't have a success with um, hit records, but I sure got educated and introduced to the world of entertainment because I knew nothing about entertainment. Okay. So I went to the, um, to the, um, uh, the educational um, system at Motown and then went to the entertainment university with Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. With Maxine. Uh Wow. The, uh, all of all of what they did. And you guys will see that. Um, for those of you who don't know Blinky, you all will see it in the next clip that we play. Um, just what a professional that she is. I mean, you know, and, and it's one thing to sing, but it's another thing just to be a professional. And you're a professional. 
That, that's all we can say is that you're a professional. Um, wow. You're not a novice at this. You're not a novice at all. Um, and Henry Jackson, our, our friend Henry Jackson says that Blinky and I are very close. I was just a guest on her Christmas show this past Friday night. And, and he was fantastic. <laughs> oh my God. He's saying he unforgettable. And then he sat down on the piano and played Mary Did You Know and turned out the Catalina. And I said, You're getting my applause. <laughs> Henry was awesome. And he's such a nice, nice person. He can really sing. He has a voice like nobody. Yes. And a person and a persona like nobody. He was my backbone doing the rehearsals of this show because I had the flu for three weeks and I was going to have my daughter cancel the show. My goddaughter, her name is Dana, she was going to cancel the show because I I was so sick. And um, Henry was my backbone. I said, well, I need for you to sing. Sing what? Yeah. You know, and he, he was so phenomenal. I just love him. <laughs> amen. Amen. And, and everybody is saying that you are just a wonderful, wonderful musician. Tell us how you learned um, to play, because you said that you sat down and played for your uh, interview at Motown. Tell us how you learned how to play. Um, it was a gift. Uh, my, per my piano lessons were very boring. And um, <laughs> my, 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 my piano teacher uh, told my parents, uh, Sandra is not reading the notes you're wasting your money but i knew i knew how to turn the pages but i didn't realize that um you know there's a rest here and a bar here and so i, I didn't i i thought i was fooling them and letting them i thought i was making them uh, i thought i was making myself look good i would play some and turn the pages but i wasn't reading the music and i was turning the pages wrong so um it, w it was just it was a gift amen you found yourself uh memorizing what is it that you heard? Yes, I remember. I remember. I would memorize what I would hear um, the other musicians play in church, or you know, at, and so it's it's just a gift. I'm sorry, am I now, talking to you? No. Now going back to the to the Motown and the Diana Ross, if if we go back, you played a part in the movie "Lady Sings the Blues," and you weren't there visibly, but you were there on the record player, correct? Um, I was emulating the voice of Bessie Smith. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Bessie Smith, uh -huh. um, uh, um, Billy Holiday loved Bessie Smith, and so um, I got real. I was I was working one night, and uh, Gilly Askey, who was a music director, he said, "This is a perfect night." for you to come and go to the studio, which is about four o'clock in the morning, and do uh, I'm Take Nobody's Business. And so that's what I was doing, emulating the voice of um, Bessie Smith, though, to me, I sounded nothing like her. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, pr I praise God for that because it was a wonderful opportunity. And um, she plays that song. She plays the record about nine times in the movie, cha-ching. She plays, the movie, plays it in the movie, you know, about nine times. Yeah, and, and people need to know, if you ever go back and watch that movie, uh, the voice that you hear is Blinky William. In fact, it says it on, it's in the opening credits. I'm sorry, my nose is itching. In the opening credits, it says, um, Tame Nobody's Business, sung by Blinky Williams. And I'm honored by that. Because yeah. they didn't use me. They didn't even have to use my name. You know, but they did. <laughs> yeah, right. that's outstanding. That is outstanding. Uh, Ms. Blinky, uh, saying on that point, uh, did you ever consider a uh, career in, say, the movies or anything that, like that since you had oh, that? Oh, no, baby. My, my, my memory's too bad. I can never be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> you can always play yourself. I mean, I can act, but I can't remember. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, um, how did you, now, what, what everybody in the entire world, I believe, knows that you uh knows this song from good times the theme of good times that came out when there wasn't a lot of blacks on tv and that was a sitcom so we all listened to the theme and the, you sang the theme to good time yes how did you get that part um i was in the studio actually doing some sammy had a label called mo west 
with Motown. And we were in there um, getting ready to do a session. And Dave Gruesome, who is the writer, of one of the writers on Good Times, and he knew me from uh, working with um, Quincy, Quincy Jones. I just came off the road with Quincy Jones. And um, he was Quincy Jones' um, keyboard player. And um, he asked me if I could come in and sing this song. He introduced me to uh, Jim Gilstrap, Omar Heard, and a couple other people. And um, and he said, can you sing this line? And just looking out of the window. And, and, and so um, and that's how it came about. And then I sang it since signed contracts. But it, it okay. was... Uh, go ahead, go ahead, finish. And, and that was it. And some of the people, they um, they get confused about the lyrics. Oh, we don't want to talk about the lyrics because that's <laughs> going to be... That's part of um, our prize that we're going to give to some oh lucky God. person. We're going to talk about the lyrics because nobody says <laughs> it's, it's two parts in the song. Um, and, and one I'm going to name now and the other one you can go ahead and talk about it. But when they go to the second part and she says, just looking out of the window, somebody, the first person that could can type in what next line to the song is after just looking out of the window. Oh, that's good. No cheating, no Google. No Googling, no cheating, no Googling, no cheating. <laughs> but so whatever you thought that they were saying, type it in. Whatever you thought she was saying, just looking out of the window. Mm -hmm. Hey, remind but, us of the story about your daughter winning the contest in Las Vegas for that song. Oh, oh my goodness! They, um, there was a contest um, in different parts of the country, and so she was in Las Vegas, and the DJ came on and said, um, "Whoever can give me the lyrics to Good Times," um, and he did what you're doing, Sandy, and he gave him the line before the line that he wanted to hear. He said, "You'll win three hundred dollars." And so she called me up and she says, mommy, there's a contest uh, here in Vegas on the radio station and um, nobody's given the right answer. Uh, would it be wrong for me to give the, the right answer? And um, so, cause she said, they're saying standing in a child line. And, and she <laughs> says, mommy, that's not the right one. Can I give it to him? I said, yes, just don't tell him who you are. And so um, <laughs> she called back and, and um, she said, um, standing in and jiving. And she won the contest. Okay, but now afterwards, um, they, cause they told her to hang on. Afterwards, they they called her and she said, um, they, they talked to her and she says, that's my mom singing the song. Can I still um, get the 300? And they said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was being yeah, I thought it was child line. Oh my goodness. No, yeah, yeah. That is hanging in and jiving. The story is, the, the first line is just looking out of the window. And then that second line, right? But these were kids that were in the, they were, the song is about a family in the projects. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have grass growing out of their window. It was that other word that I can't sing because Sandy. <laughs> yeah, they, they got it. They got it. Okay, watching the asphalt grow. Yeah, because they didn't have no grass. So they had to look at the asphalt. Um, thinking of how it all looked hand me down and families were just barely making it and they were keeping their head above water, mm -hmm. making a way when they can. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of temporary layoffs, credit ripoffs, you know, you go to apply for credit and they're, they're ripping you off. Uh, and so that's, the song was, a, um, was about a get, about a ghetto life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were hanging inside and job, you know, playing Monopoly and Old Maid, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, I would have never. I, now the child line never, never came in my mind. You know, even as a kid watching it, um, I, I just never thought about hanging in the child line. But, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's 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 cool. It's. Um, so we did get a winner. Diane Gatewood Williams is the winner. Woo woo! <laughs> so she came up. She was the first one that came up with the correct answer. Watching the asphalt grow, um, and we would think of grass growing, but mm -hmm. in the process, it's mm -hmm. all 
fault. So right. that's that's what it is. So um, thank you, Blinky, for those, the words to that, because a lot of folks have been tripped up for years, even as they watch in syndication. Now, do you know, in case we don't know how that works, do you still get money from that? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> every four months is residual time. And I thank God yeah. every four months. It's that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Why are you praising on that? Come on. Come on, <laughs> They, they got to call my name just in the check. <laughs> Send the check. Send the check. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because I tied from it. All right. All right. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And and Bobby said the gift that just keeps on giving. And when you get a syndication, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. 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 I just love that. I love it. Love it. Love it. So Blake, um, I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Did you record it on VJ Records? Yes. Right. Did you have a, uh, what was your relationship with Vivian Carter? Don't remember. Oh, she was the owner of the record company. Uh, out um, of I, I, I just don't, okay. I don't remember. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, uh, just if the name is on the check. S O N D R A. See, and let it cash. Let it cash. Yeah. Oh, they they love you. They they're saying that you are hilarious <laughs> and cool. All right. <laughs> but now I'm gonna play another song, um, Blinky, and this is the last song for for us for today. But um, this particular song it moved me. Um, when I first saw the video and um, on the piano is uh, Dr. Rodina Preston on the organ is uh, uh, Malone, uh, Jackie Malone, and you are singing and Mm -hmm. you're you're singing Jesus paid it all. And if you ever want to see someone be professional, you had three consummate professionals. Um, on two on the instruments and you were playing your instrument, your voice. And I mean, it's just awesome. Just awesome. And after we play it, I want you to give your remarks about, you know, this song and what it meant to be with. I know you were very good friends with uh, Dr. Rodina Preston. Um, and and tell us about that journey. Um, okay. That had in your life. So we're going to go uh, to a song right now. And this one is Jesus Paid It All after we play a couple commercials because y'all know we got to get all of that in. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. <laughs> so we'll be right back after this. This is WVTC, the gospel radio station right in Detroit. You're listening to WVTC Detroit. Opportunity is knocking at your door. It's WVTC Detroit. And if you're reliable, dependable, a fast learner, and you're ready to work in a fast-paced environment, we have something just for you. Part-time board operator, and we will train. You must have your own transportation and be flexible. Only serious inquiries, please. Send your email to WVTC Detroit L. Whitfield at gmail.com. We are waiting to hear from you. Hey, are you in need of a jingle, a commercial, or have you considered a podcast for your business or ministry? If so, let WVTC Radio Detroit be your choice. 
And guess what? Location is not a problem. We can pick you up and broadcast you from anywhere. For more information, please go to our website at wbtcdetroit.com or drop us an email at wbtcradiodetroit at gmail.com. We're waiting to hear from you. He paid it. He paid he it all. Jesus. He paid it. Yes, sir. Yes, mm. sir. And, mm. and you know, and, and that's what, even looking at that, I, I we heard every single word that you said. Mm -hmm. We didn't wonder, you know, it wasn't too many runs. It it, it was just a professional performance mm -hmm. yes. of that song. I mean, a rendition of that song. Mm -hmm. um, what does that song mean to you? <laughs> you know, he was born to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was killed to live. <laughs> yeah. He paid it all. He paid it all. Um, that, now, that's that. Um, it touches me because I love the song. It's an old hymn. Yeah. And, uh, that was a service. It was an appreciation service honoring Dr. Henry Jackson. 
So oh. I was honored yeah. to be his special guest. Yeah. And uh, Rodina and Williams uh, was was my sister in law. She was married to my brother. Oh wow! Oh. Yes. Okay. And so I've known Rodina all my life. In fact, that's how I met um, Edna Tatum. And we became the big three. And it was my was my was my tennis was my tennis playing buddy, and Rodina was always such a wonderful big sister to me. And they and they, wow! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. and that was just awesome, just awesome, mm -hmm. and just just looking at that. And and I thank God whoever filmed that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because we will have that forever. And that's mm -hmm. what he said. The video was was recorded at his birthday celebration at the First AME Church in Los Angeles. That's and we right. Played from uh, Henry Jackson, and we just we just loved it. And that song it it means a lot to us. And that. That performance, if you want to be, you are aspiring to be a soloist, look at that video. Mm -hmm. Just look at that video. If if you think the Lord has called you to sing solo, watch that video. And, and you gave credit to your musicians. Um, you know, it was just all there. It was all there. All there. You don't have to hit you know, to get over Mm -hmm. Now, Blinky, Janie Bradford honored you this past September with the Lifetime yeah. Achievement Awards at the Heroes and Legends Awards. What did that mean to you getting that award? Oh, that means as much to me as this song, Jesus Paid All, did. I, I, was, I, was, I was honored but totally shocked. I performed at it one year. But um, for me to receive a Hero and Legend, Award. Yes. From Motown. I, I never looked at myself as a hero, as a legend. And it, it really did mean a lot. For, it, it meant a lot to me. And then for it to be presented to me by the H.B. Barnum. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. then uh, Barry to get up um, at the end of the awards and pay tribute to me. I was I was I was really honored. I I was just honored, just like I am honored to be on this show tonight. I don't consider myself nobody super or a legend. They said I was a double sure. legend. I don't consider myself a, sure. a single legend. For you, Sandy, to want me to be on your show, I'm very honored. And for we Richard, we are honored. I hey. know that's right. We uh, are we are the benefactors. <laughs> this um, right. yes we are the ones that are blessed uh you are uh, such a wonderful person i know you to be a good friend um edna talked about you daily um <laughs> you, i know you to be a good friend and uh just your gift the gift like i, I was introducing you to uh, my cousin today and she was saying oh my god she really can sing so mm -hmm. you know just to introduce you to a whole new generation mm -hmm. of people it's just awesome just mm -hmm. awesome and if you. i may jump in right here it, you know uh, i when i i now this is my first time ever hearing your, your name but i've heard your voice over the, over the years I heard the voice and did not associate a name or a face with the voice. And it's almost like you are the gospel hidden figures. Yes, yes, yes. The person who's been doing outstanding, not just look me meager, but you've been doing outstanding things for decades, mm -hmm. for decades. Aretha is now gone. Whitney is gone. Natalie Cole is gone. And we get the list goes on and on of the voices that are gone. But you still that are gone, but you're still here. And, and now singing. God shines a light on what you've been doing for decades. It's almost, you know, it's like I we, we say about the Whitfield Company. Their music, the music we did in the 70s, 
sound fabulous it, and we in two, 2022 soon to be 23 mm -hmm. and your voice and your music that you did in 1950 in 1960 in 19 sounds phenomenal 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 in 2000 soon to be 23 i'm all i gotta <laughs> say to you is stay in your body stay well because mm -hmm. the door now because we need legends we need legends who do things on a professional way with excellence and not a whole lot of unnecessary that's right and that's who you are oh i've just yeah. enjoyed you today now i got the face and the name with the voice because i've been listening to the voice for decades. god bless yeah. you baby and that's all i got to say you ain't even got to do when you do the round around me you go on by me Pass it. <laughs> Pass it on you know saying like jesus paid it all if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have made it through what i've been through in the last yeah. couple of weeks yeah 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 awesome awesome just awesome yeah, i agree with you uh, pastor jackie i agree with thank you, you. I, I hope you don't mind giving a testimony today i remember a couple of months ago we were at bishop glenn gamble's church and someone told you you know your brother had been sick and someone told you your brother would go back to church and I heard your brother was at your concert on Friday. My brother, he passes True Vine Baptist Church in Inglewood. And I was uh, <clears throat> in with the music ministry there for until just in re just recent months. And my brother <coughs> had preached in seven months. My brother, um, my brother's mind was just about gone. I thought he was on his way out of here. He couldn't remember. His short-term memory was gone. His long-term memory was not there. He could not walk without a walker, without assistance. Ten days ago, he started walking without the walker. The mm. disease that was in his body, which was sepsis, it left the body. <laughs> and he came the other night. I said, I want you to come up on stage. He walked on stage without a walker. Mm. Mm. God, on Pastor Kwame Crosby, helped him to get up the stairs, he and Brother Quincy Fielding. And my brother, I said, I know that a lot of people here have been drinking tonight, but I'm going to ask my brother to give prayer here in the club. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And, Amen. And, 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 that, that's my testimony. We thought he was on his way out of here. But God raised Austin Williams up. I call him Bubby. God raised him up, raised his body. I, he preached Sunday, Christmas Sunday, for the first time. Wow. In seven, first time wow. in seven months. Okay. Wow. Is, Won't he do it? Yes, Won't he will. Do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Won't he will. Yes, he will. And, yes, and, and, and do, you, do you know what? When I said, I'm going to ask my brother to come and pray, because um, some of you have been drinking, and, and I want to make sure that you get home safely. I said, there in prayer is an order everywhere. How many of you believe in prayer? Baby, get, the house was it, a thunderous applause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I heard so many hallelujahs that night. And thank you for letting me share that, Richard. It just showed me again what God can do. You keep yeah. on hurting. That's people. right. And see, you you know, and people don't understand that's where people's hearts and minds are open. Yes. You know, and, and he'll place you places where somebody needed that prayer. Somebody yes. needed to hear you sing. Somebody needed to see you go into a church mode. They needed all of that. And so mm -hmm. we don't ever despise anything like that. Um yeah. you know, we thank God for prayer and we thank God for you and those of those that follow you that will will come and be a part of your camp to help to be a witness, you know? I'm writing a book and I'm almost through. It's entitled, But I Always Sing on Sunday. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. No, that's right. That's good. I'm going to give you copies so that you can take to the pastor and to and to Sandy Rose. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, 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 That's I, I, right. But I always think on Sunday. 
Oop, I'm about ready to go in. I'm about to go in because you said a mouthful. We have been talking to different gospel, predominantly gospel artists that don't attend church on Sunday. Hmm. And they are the award-winning gospel artists and they don't go to church on Sunday. And I love the title of that book. But I oh, yeah. wait to be a good one. You know, I got that title from, I was Minister of Music for Dr. Evie Hill for 11 years. Oh. And, um, and when I would go on the road, you would understand at Mount Zion Baptist Church. And he said, oh, you know, yeah. you, ought, you ought to write a book and the name of it should be, but I always sang on Sunday. <laughs> wow. That I mean, that said it all. We can open it up and just see the title and just move on. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> that that spoke volumes. It spoke volumes. So where where are you singing now? I I, I know you have different choirs. The the Hollywood Choir is that is that the name of it? Yes. Mm-hmm. And um um I have a new group of singers called um um in the Kia C. Uh, oh. Appear- they appeared with me the other night at the Catalina. And um, um, I'm a musician for Concord Baptist Church in Los Angeles. But I go back to um, the Catalina in February. Okay. I'm not getting on uh, Southwest. <laughs> Don't, you get on Southwest. <laughs> Don't you dare get on Southwest. <laughs> Baby, I was so glad to know that you finally made it home. I was just praying for you, Richard. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and we got one of our one of our faithful members. We call them members of the show. Um, Roosevelt is out. He needs it. When he heard the title of the book, I mm-hmm. like I like that one. I always sing on Sunday. He's calling for the ushers and the nurses. <laughs> we have to put a sheet over. Her. We're gonna have to put a sheet over Roosevelt. Yeah, we gonna put a sheet over him, honey. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So now you work with all groups and nationalities. Is you know, is there a big difference in working with uh, with your predominantly blacks or uh, you know? I've watched some of your YouTube clips and uh, some of the choirs. They're they're all white. So how is that working working with the different races? Um, a blessing. Um, I work with a church called the Los Angeles Family Church in Monterey Park and um, have a group of singers there. And they're, they're mostly Japanese and Korean. Uh, I get it. I, um, their church starts on um, at eight o'clock. I mean, I'm sorry, nine o'clock. They pick me up. I get there at 815. I rehearse them. I rehearse them four songs and 10 minutes to nine. We're drinking tea. They've already learned the songs. Mm. The difference wow. is their attention span is focused on the, the songs and the melody and the message. And they want to deliver the message good. They learn quickly. Okay. Mm. If, I, if Sometimes when I go and rehearse them um, on the day before they sing, I can, I can teach them as many as seven and eight songs because they learn just that quickly and they want to be good. They think the world of... Um, the the black gospel singer, mm. yeah. And, uh, and so they, they they learn they. Bottom line is they learn quickly. They love the Lord, and they'll start talking in tongues in the middle of a song. And they're not talking. They're not. They're not. They're not speaking in in, in Japanese. They're speaking in tongue. But they're and they're like, they, they're, they might appreciate it more than we do. Yeah. Um, I think so. They don't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, they're mm-hmm. not arrogant. And when they come in there. Nobody's talking but me. Mm. Nobody's teaching but me. They don't ask no questions. They wait to be taught. And if they, do, a lot of times singers, they will, well, now, is it this, none of that? And just listen. <laughs> and so their diction is not the greatest, but they strive for perfection because they want to be um, great for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I I watch them just looking at you, you know, like they are, you know, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? You know, and they are very attentive uh, to to what you have taught them. And I mean, how long have you been doing that? Then um, about 
Uh oh. Uh oh. We almost made it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, so how long have you? Because we, you kind of froze up there. Uh oh, hold on. sound gone. Okay, the sound is gone. You're on mute. No, she's not on mute. Um, but uh, we don't hear you anymore. We there got a go. couple minutes, Blinky. I'm gonna call her. Okay. But this has just been such a blessing. Awesome. I mean, awesome. And if you didn't feel something today, Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And if you didn't learn something today, I mean, you know, even with the songs and the words that we have gone over from the good time thing, uh, you know, and you've never, you've sang that song for years and we've never, ever known who sang the song. So right. Who's, right. Yeah, we we've never known who was behind the song, and couldn't so put a we, face with the with, with, and so even if we read the credits, couldn't put a face with it, and now now you can put a face with it. Yeah, yeah, now you can put a face with it, mm -hmm. and I mean Blinky is just the consummate professional, and and like I said, I would never. I met her as a friend, and uh, she was just a good, good, good friend of uh, Dr. Edna Tatum, and uh, she spoke very highly of her. And even when she uh, was in her illness, uh, Blinky was right there for her to um, to be a friend and brought her things and, 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 and all of that. So just a great friend, just a great friend. We're trying to get her back on so she can give her closing thoughts. So while we're trying to get her back on, uh, let's get some closing thoughts. Now, I know you said, Pastor Jack, you said to pass over you, but you have come back down. <laughs> yeah, give it some more. All I can say, this has been a, a blessing for I think me. we can hear Can you hear you? Oh, can you say yeah. something? Uh, I praise God for meeting you. Um, Edna thought the world, the world of you. And I'm so glad that you want, um, that, that you want me to be on this show. This has just really, really touched my heart. And, and, and Richard, you know, I love you. Love you back. So this, is, this has been wonderful. I told but, you you was going to be on your couch drinking tea. <laughs> <laughs> And she took us to school. You took us to school. Um, and to church. And to church. So we went to church school. Godson set me up. I'm sitting in his office. He's the pastor of Sermon on the Mount in Los Angeles. And so I'm, I'm, I'm at his office. And I don't know what happened to the mic, but I'm talking on my phone. <laughs> Amen. And we know that. Yeah, we're getting some feedback. Um, it's probably because, and I uh, did was able to mute that. But I mean, she took us to church, just took us to church and took us to school with this entire program. And we just thank you, thank you, thank you. So Pastor Jackie, uh, we're going to do our round robin. And, and if we can get, uh, I guess, uh, Blinky may be gone. Hopefully she'll try to come back. Uh, on the line, but in, in case she does, and Pastor Jack, give us your closing thoughts for today. Well, let me simply say, uh, continue to have a happy holiday. Look forward to wonderful things and what God is going to do in your behalf in uh, 2023. And then thank him for what he's brought us through in 2022. I couldn't have made it without him. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for the opportunity. Glad to be on tonight. And Blinky has just blessed <laughs> my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm, I'm glad I was on today. <laughs> I'm glad I was on because Jesus did pay it all. And right. I I, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I love all of you. Continue to have a safe going to this new year. And please, please stay in your body. Stay <laughs> in your body. In Life your body. is right. Amen. Amen. And uh, Teresa? Okay. And of course, Pastor Jackie says stay in your body. Uh, we definitely want to try to do that. 
Uh, but we do want to remind everyone that uh, we'd like to honor uh, your um, relatives that have passed on this year. So if you would uh, please uh, send in your names of those you'd like to honor. Um, and this we'll, is to all of the audience. Yes, all of, all of the audience. Um, we'll be doing that in January, but we'll need a list. So if you wouldn't mind, please uh, le le leaving your name in the um, inbox, WBTC Radio Detroit inbox. And so we can get those. If you know us personally, you can you know, talk to us personally, but just send, send us your names. We'd love to honor your relatives uh, uh, for this year. And um, so I, you know, I concur with everyone else. This has been a wonderful show and uh, it's great to meet uh, Blinky Williams. And uh, I you know, didn't know anything about her other singing. So I was really um, inspired and blessed by what we heard and, and the, the words that she spoke. So we were certainly glad to have had her on the show. Thank you very much, Richard, for making that happen. And thank you, Sandy, uh, for all that you do. And of course, Pastor Jackie and all of our crew, thank you so much. Uh, you know what? This is the last show of the year, isn't it? This is the last show of the year. It is. It is. So God bless to everyone that, that that tunes in every week, every day. Thank you so much for being there. Um, and uh, and the crew, we love you guys. And uh, let's let's do it again next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it again. All right. If I had, if I had to put my life on, we rewind. I'd have to say all of my life, God has been good 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 to me mm -hmm. and so i want to thank the lord uh for giving me this opportunity thank you sandy for also giving me the opportunity to sit here with you and Teresa and pastor jackie uh, i want to thank uh, blinky she has become my friend and we just have a good time together all the time and i just want to say one thing i'm so glad i am a professional groupie <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, because I have met some wonderful people. Yes, you have. And you, yes, have, you have introduced us to some wonderful people. And we yes. thank you for bringing your friends to be our friends. Amen. Um, and we want to thank, I want to personally thank Teresa and Richard and Pastor Jackie you for being um, on our panel. We thank God for you. Um, and many days you just don't know we wanted to just throw in the towel and say i do we really want to do this again but i look at your faces and you guys say yep we're going to keep going and so i appreciate all of that i want to thank shirley um everybody knows <laughs> of shirley everybody everybody and we want to thank shirley for all that she does for our station and all that it, that she has done down through the years and for the encouragement that she gives us as well. Mm -hmm. We want to thank Diane for her faithfulness. Great is her faithfulness. Mm -hmm. um, Diane is faithful, faithful. And he said, it, be ye faithful because unto, unto death, and he's going to give you a crown of life. And if nothing else, Diane, I can say, I can attest to the fact that you are faithful and I appreciate every single thing that you do for WVTC Detroit. And uh, we want to thank all of our listeners for uh, your donations that you have given us. We were able to this year, um, along with the Gospel Music Workshop of America, the Detroit chapter, give out socks and throws to all of the residents of three um, three nursing facilities. Mm -hmm. We were able to bag them up and give them out, and we appreciate. They just uh, the the workers there just cried and just thanked us for everything that we were able to do, and we only were able to do that because of you. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done. Um, thank you for Richard for what you've done um, with the guests this year. Uh, I I just don't know. I I can't say enough about you, Richard. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. And um, even when I was in the fair city of, I didn't get to Chino. You know, 
Chino <laughs> the <laughs> came over to me and picked me up and we went to see uh, Donna Weber. Uh, we, we fellowshiped with uh, Dr. Betty Griffin Keller. We fellowship with Miss Catherine um, and uh, our our dear sister Wilma, who puts up with Richard, Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were able to <laughs> we were able to fellowship, Amen. And amen. took us around, and we visited the churches, and we've just done so much. And we want to thank each and every one of you for every time we turn this broadcast on. You are here, so we want to say thank you. We're looking forward to working with our new station manager, um, uh, Larry Whitfield. And uh, we are also looking forward to, I talked to my cousin today, and I think I think we might have a sum going. So uh, right. we're going to see what 2023 has in store. So we are just so happy and excited, excited about what the Lord is doing. Um, any other announcements? Attend watch meeting service, y'all. <laughs> we get to do it at six o'clock. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Richard, you're having watch meeting service at your church, right? At St. Stephen Missionary Baptist Church, 1720 North Walnut. With we're going to be with Lena Bird Miles, powerful house. All and right. All right. Yeah. So if you're anywhere near that place, we want you to make sure that you go make sure that you go because it is going to be fantastic. Um, if there be nothing else, we want to say we love each and every one of you. Thank everyone. You, thank you. And we are wishing God's choices, choices, blessings on you that you would end this new, this, this year and that you would start the brand new year off um, with new excitement and new Great. fervor as you as you just move forward as you move forward and may 2023 be all that you think it is. may it be the best year ever ever thank you Therese. we love you um love thank you. you for your faithfulness honey thank you thank you thank amen. you amen all right well we love you and there's absolutely nothing absolutely you nothing. About. see and you then, next year see you next year <laughs> Night night. Night night, Trees. Happy New Year, <laughs> Juliet. All right. Happy Happy New Year, cuz. <laughs> we'll see you. Elder Rudolph Stanfield.
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ. You're listening to WVTC, Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.